In guitar recording, there's pretty much three mics that we use. The Shure SM57, Sennheiser 421, and this. This is a Royer 121 ribbon mic. In Nashville, they've been using a combination of the 121 and 57 for years. I'm gonna show you what it sounds like and how to do it, coming up next. Now, I first heard about this working up at Blackbird Studios in Nashville, probably about 10 years ago. The head engineer there told me that Dan Huff always mic'd his guitars that way, and that was kind of the default way that they would mic guitars. I had never heard it, and when he put those two mics up on one speaker, it sounded phenomenal. Well, Royer actually is coming out with a new mic clip here. This is a prototype that they sent me to check out. Because one of the problems <laughs> with this is when you have the two stands next to each other, it's kind of a pain to actually get the mics close to each other like this. What I want to do is I want to go in the control room. Rhett's going to play guitar, and I'm going to show you what this sounds like with the two mics combined. Now, I'm going to run the two microphones through these Brent Averill or BAE 1073. It's a Brent Averill one. This is BAE 1073. The only thing I have on them is a high pass filter at 50 hertz just to get out any of the rumble. The cabinet it's going through, the high watt cabinet has a lot of bottom end and that's gonna take care of that right there. <laughs> okay, so there's that. Okay, so one of the reasons, like I said, that I want to use this new mic clip that Royer came out with is because having these two stands near each other, it's actually really hard to, to it's, it's kind of a pain to get the mics next to each other like that. So I'm going to take these off here and I'm going to use one stand. Okay, so as you can see here, the two diaphragms are right next to each other now. The SM57 diaphragm is right about there, so. And this is obviously a much tighter positioning here. This is way, way better to have to put up and you, uh, against the speaker grill, and you can really move it around a lot easier by moving both mics at the same time. Keeps it perfectly in phase. So let's check it out here. I'm gonna move it over here. I'm going to line it up. I'm going to get in tight with it. Oh, this is amazing. Okay, so now the mics are in the exact same position they were in, but I only am using one mic stand, which is far superior. Okay, one thing about the mic placement, I have the Royer on the outside and the 57 on the inside because I want the 57 to get more of the bite. That's pretty much right where the dust cover meets the cone. Now, you can also either flip the microphone around so the Royer is pointing upwards, or you can go like this and just move it over on the other side if you want the Royer to be on the inside and the 57 to be on the outside. It really depends on the kind of sound that you're going for. Okay, so we've changed mic clips. We've also cha changed guitarists. I've got Dave playing guitar now with a Les Paul with P90s on it. I want to show you actually what it sounds like with that mic combination and a different guitar through the same amplifier. <laughs>
Next, let's check out Pro Tools to hear each individual mic. We're gonna start out with Rhett Royer on his Telecaster. Let's check it out. And here's the 57 by itself. Then together. You can hear that the 57 is providing the bite. It's not up as loud as the 121, but it really gives you that in-your-face attack, whereas the Royer gives you that creamy sound. I'm going to zoom in so you can see what the phase alignment looks like. It's actually perfectly in phase. If we go, it doesn't matter where you go. You just go anywhere here. And you can see right down to the sample level that it's all perfectly in phase. Those two mics are right next to each other and they sound great. Next, let's check out Dave's sound. It's gonna sound a little different because of the Les Paul. Those P90s have a very different sound, but let's listen to it. There's 121. With 57 added to it. Now, if you want to check the phase, I can just put an EQ on here and I can just flip the phase so you can hear what happens. Out of phase. In phase. That's how you check yourself. Well, you can just go in here and you can zoom in and look and you can see that these are perfectly in phase right here. All these downward humps are down, all the upward humps are up. So that's how you can tell. It's pretty easy to do that. Fifty-seven is very thin by itself. And depending on how you balance them, you can totally change the EQ. So the Royer 121, once again, one of my favorite mics to use in recording electric guitar, recording really anything. And this new mic clip has just made my life way easier because I hate messing around with stands. What do you think, Rhett? Yeah, the 121 is pretty much next on my list of major pieces of gear to buy because the 121, I, I track guitars a lot. Uh, I record guitars all the time, and to me, my favorite mic combination for recording guitars is a 121 and a 57. And it always has been that thing of you spend 15 minutes trying to get <laughs> the two stands to line up perfectly so you can, and then if you bump one, then you have to start over. Oh. And so honestly, <laughs> I think the clip is pretty genius. Yeah. Um, Dave was saying those two mic stands are, are kind of cockeyed and they're they're bumping one another. Yeah, as we're filming this, we, we, I, I was going like, I need that mic clip right now because we have yeah. two stands and it's doing like it always does. They bump into each other. Now talk about though the sound of the the Royer, how how the 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 fifty seven fits in the center of the. Yeah, what I what I noticed with it is that the Royer like really does really well in the mids it does a really nice like it's got a certain bump in it that it's just for guitars is just it's the right bump you know it's like you don't have to do any eq it's like right there and then the 57 just adds that little shimmer in the top of it and kind of gets a little glassiness that it really needs and then it's a great mix i mean i can see why it's just a tried and true pair so. i think the royer is the best it's the most accurate representation of what the speaker cone actually sounds like what the amp actually sounds like in the room and like what Dave was saying the 57 complements it well because the 57 has that sort of upper mid-range bite yeah that yeah. that is classic SM57 and so it just sort of sits on top of the 121s I don't even know that I would even call the 121 a warm mic I would call it an accurate mic so if you've got a warm speaker you're going to have a warm mic sound and you can tell between the two guitars the difference in it it doesn't like it, the guitars still sound like the guitar. Like it doesn't have it's it's not clouding the sound of anything. It's your you, the telly sounds like a telly. This Paul with a P90 sounds like a Paul with a P90, it, which is great because you know that's really what you want. So. Yeah. Now I will typically mic both speakers if I'm using a different mic combination. But when I use a Royer and a 57, 
I always use them right next to each other, just like that. So this mic clip is killer. That's all for now. Please subscribe here to my Everything Music YouTube channel. If you're interested in the Beato book, go to my website at www.rickbeato.com. That's how I support this channel is really through things that you buy on the website. Beato book, t-shirts, mugs. Follow me on Instagram at rickbeato1. If you want to support the channel even more, become a member of the Beato Club. Thanks so much for watching. Thank you.